Sí. Excuse me. Okay. Now? Is that okay? <clears throat> well, let us start with a small prayer. Near the Father, under the Son, under the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your presence and your gracious willingness to let us to learn something that we have not learned before, something that we have learned so that we may learn more effectively and put into practice and witness for your divine love through our knowledge and through our way of life. We ask this through the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary and through all the saints, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. St. Vincent de Paul, our patron, pray for us. A grandfather and his grandson had a conversation. So the grandson came from the class. They learned many things about Jesus and Mother Mary and saints. The grandpa asked, so what did you learn today? The grandson said, we learn about how Jesus loves us, that our hearts are in Jesus, when we love Jesus back. So that is a new thing I learned, that our hearts are in Jesus. Then grandpa was wondering, then where did you think your heart was? Well, I thought different place. Tell me more about that. Oh, whenever um, grandma used to pat me at the bottom, she used to say, you little heart, I love you. <laughs> so I thought somewhere else. Now I know where it is. Our hearts are restless until they rest in the Lord. Of course, that is called the union, the spiritual union of a soul of a person. The complete union of our human beings happens at the end of this life, or it happens as a way to fulfill God's plan. You know? And that's why we are all working on different level. This is what I'm going to grow. This is what I'm going to do. So a saint, the Catholic teaching, is a person who always tries to do God's will. A saint is not a superhuman person. A saint is an ordinary human person who always longs to do the will of God. Always put God, always puts God in the first place about everything about himself and thereby they become always in the presence of God. They live in the presence of God and they are able to do all things in the presence of God and they see everything through the presence of God. So they are able to love and relate and able to do all activities of their lives in the presence of God. And that's why we have a notion that he's a holy person. You know, someone who is doing always great things, very kind, very, very mature enough to treat people, unable to forgive people, help people, and we call the person, what a holy person he is or she is, you know. So they carry the presence of God. They carry like a vessel that carries something so precious. So they cannot go without the presence of God. So we believe as Catholics, we believe in the saints and we believe in Blessed Virgin Mary. The saints, Blessed Virgin Mary, are very important teachings 
of our Catholic Church. But some of our Christian brothers, some of our Protestant brothers and sisters, they come up with some objections. There are four commonly, popularly known as the objection from the, our Protestant brothers and sisters. When we talk about, oh, I, I pray to St. Anthony, if I lose something, they're going to say, why do you pray to St. Anthony? You just pray to Jesus, you will find it. He has answered. Oh, I pray to uh, St. Catherine of Siena for my spiritual growth. I pray to St. Mother Teresa so that I may have a heart of charity. I pray to St. Francis Xavier so I can be a great person who knows the gospel, proclaim the gospel. So we pray to so many saints. When we say that to anyone who is not a Catholic, they may say, what's wrong with you? Why do you go for that kind of things? Go straight to Jesus. He has all kinds of answers. He has all resolution for your problems, for your questions, for your doubts. Why do you approach other people? The first objections our Protestant brothers may say, they say that Catholics worship Mary and saints. So they call us Mary worshipers, or idol worshipers, or idolaters. The second objection they say, since you worship, you pray to them. That seems to be logical, am I right? Since you worship them, you pray to them. But if they don't hear when we pray, St. Anthony, pray for us. We don't say, give us. We don't say that. We always say, pray for us. Intercede for us. Help us with your divine assistance. That's what we pray, even with Mother Mary. She's the mother of all the apostles, all the saints, all holy men and women. She's the mother. Even to her, when we pray, pray for us. We don't say, please give us. We don't say, please grant us this favor. But things are being misunderstood, being Produced for a long time too. The third objection they say, there is only one mediator who is Christ. There's no one else. Why do you go for other people? Seems to be logic, but I'm going to give you what, what the Catholic Church is teaching. The fourth objection they say, Bible does not tell, tell us about saints or Blessed Virgin Mary as a mother of God or she is your intercessor or something. Why do you go yourself beyond what the Bible is teaching you? So why do you have the statues? Why do you have the relics of the saints? Why do you have different novena prayer or some procession with the saints statue? Why do you do all these things? Bible does not tell us anything about it. Bible is not telling anything about that. Why do you do that? A Catholic church profoundly responds to that with a historical way to explain that. We do not worship saints or Mother Mary. There is only one God. So this problem did not come in our century. It came the year 325. And they convened the Nicene, Nicene Council, Nicaea Council, and, there is, and they, they declared that there is only one God. Since, since there was a great dispute about whether Jesus was fully human, are fully divine. The Arianism came up. Then the Arianism said, Jesus was not fully divine, he was fully human, then he became divine. Then another group said, no, Jesus was 
fully divine he came as a human he was not completely divine when he was living here he was living as a human then he went back took the old job our all image our all title to say i'm back to divinity so this came up the year to 325 so the church came together both west and the east catholic churches came together to respond to that and that's what we say at every sunday mass the nicene creed why do you have that kind of long description about jesus have you ever wondered about that the nicene creed talks about who jesus is he was god before all ages light from light god from god not begotten and he was he was the sub he was the substance of the god himself so he was god before he came down on this earth and he was god while he was living as a human person so his divine nature was not changed so this actually addressed to what we are talking about who is mother mary mother mary is a mother of god so mother of god who brought jesus back to the world the human flesh of god of course through her willingness through her humility through her surrendering herself to god's will brought forth god as a human person so as to say that she is a mother of god and as she is mother of jesus as she was able to have her son in her womb and able to deliver him as a human person so his nature is not changed his divine nature is not changed so as to say that his human nature also was together when he was living that's the reason he was able to do all miracles raising dead people and himself he was he rose from the dead at the end only god can do that god only can raise can raise himself from the dead so that explains what we are believing so we believe in only one god god is only one we are not worshiping anyone so that was addressed in many many councils of a catholic church so as i said the nicene creed was a clear evidence and the council at rome year 382 and council at toledo 675 Lateran Fourth Council, year 1215. The Council of Lyons, 1274. The Council at Florence, 1442. Trent, the Council of Trent, 1545. Where the, we, the Council of Trent really explains what are we... what is the purpose we have the images or the pictures or the statues why do we have that 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 counts really explain as a way to answer to the uh, lutheran uh, questions you catholics are worshiping the statues and that council of trent answer very very clearly this is what we do so it says we honor and worship christ alone we 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 are, we are able to venerate the saints and mother mary through them we also worship christ who gave all virtues and all graces to them so the council of trent clearly explained what we really believe what we are really doing then vatican uh, first vatican council in the year 1869 also exp- explain what we are really worshiping and what is our the foundation of our faith and so on 
The year 674, John Damas Damasins wrote a book called his, his Own Sermons, the sermons against those who reject sacred images. And he clearly tells us that, John Damasins beautifully tells us that if we are worshiping the idols and statues, then we would be so impious. We would not be pious because we are worshiping many people. In no way we can have a collective way to say, this is what we do. Then our, our, our church can be divided. That's what he explains further. Because one is worshiping St. Anthony, one is worshiping St. Francis, and that can be a great division. So we are not doing that. The, the collective way of expressing our faith is very, very fundamentally focused on Christ only. So through all the saints, no matter who is our favorite saint or not, or who is our least favorite saint, but we are, we are worshiping Christ only through all those holy men and women. So that was a great, great way to explain this is what we are doing. So some of our Protestant brothers may say, if you are praying to Jesus, then you are able to completely surrender yourself. But if you are praying to saint, you are distracting yourself from Jesus. But that is not true. Romans, the letter to the Romans, St. Paul tells us, chapter 12, verse 2, do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. So in that regard, we are able to see we are putting our mind as, as a way to put Christ as a center. So we bring all saints, we are able to look at through the lives and the, all the life events of all the saints and able to see the working, the working hand of God in their lives. The grace of God that led them to be a holy person. We pick their example, able to see this is what I can live to. So I, I see the example of St. Teresa of Child Jesus that I am able to put myself like her, that I will do anything to offer to Jesus. That I will be so humble to do anything for as a little flower to Jesus. And we can quote many, many St. Francis of Assisi, St. Anthony of Padua. So, so many, so many saints, they were able to focus Christ alone. They were able to love Jesus. And that's how we are able to pick their examples their own religious practices as to say that we also follow Christ as they follow Christ. So that is called the renewal of mind, putting Christ as the center of our life. And I want to highlight one saint today, St. Catherine of Siena. She went through a tough life in her childhood too. She was able to offer everything, and she was called to be a religious man. So she would pray to God how she can renew the life of the monastic life. There's a lot of uh, scandal going on in her, in her times. So she wanted to revive all monastic life uh, activities, convents. So she prayed to God, and she was able to receive the revelation of God. So her conversation with God made her to write some prayer reflection and that was known as the dialogue. So those prayers, those reflections are recognized by the church as a way that, that they were revealed by God himself to her in her prayer. As she was able to be the spiritual guide to so many people in her time also. Through her spiritual reflection, reflection through her prayer, she was able to offer, this is what God will do for you. 
So she let so many, so many young women to enter into convent, to embrace the monastic life, which is more, more dedicated to focusing on the life of Christ as a way to be the virgin, dedicating themselves to serve and love Christ through their lives. So her life and her book is a great example how she was able to lead, inspire so many people to Christ. And there was a big scandal going on. A lot of religious animosity was going on against religious life, against Catholic Church. But she was able to inspire, turn the whole thing back and forth, able to bring a great renewal the religious life invited so many people to follow her so that they may love Jesus and able to adapt to the same way that she pr promoted true. The second thing that we are able to reflect today is Mother Mary. Our Protestant brothers I'm sure some of you may have told, told you, or many have told you that you idolize Mother Mary so high that, the, that she obscured Jesus. As a way to explain that, some saints put the image of the sun and moon. Sun, our Lord Jesus Christ, moon is the Blessed Virgin Mary. The moon does not take the place of the sun. The moon does not put itself or herself in the place of sun. Does not steal anything. Does not pretend to be sun. Does not make itself to be the prominent or the only light giving element. The moon is shining on its own, radiating the sun, reflecting the sun sometime. The sun is always bright and gives the light to all creatures of this earth. The, the moon is not taking or hiding or anything the moon is reflecting the sun as a way to say it radiates the light to all creatures at night. Some, some Protestants, even to that analogy, they will say, what about eclipse? <laughs> well, some feast days, we pray to Mother Mary. So that can be eclipse. But that does not stay for a long time. We may sing a hymn to Mother Mary that does not diminish Jesus, that doesn't put Jesus any way lower. She is glorified through the divinity of her son. So some theologian would say Her total subordination to Christ is her glory. And her glory is her total subordination. A Muslim wrote a, a interpretation, a kind of theological reflection on Quran. There's a big, there's a chapter on Mother Mary in Quran, the holy book of the Muslim, Islam. So Muslim says that she is a perfect Muslim. He calls her as a perfect Muslim because she is a perfect surrenderer. I mean, she perfectly surrendered herself completely to God. And that's what we call the fiat. You know, let it be done according to your word. That's what we hear at the Annunciation, Luke chapter 1, verse 38. So what we really talk about, Blessed Virgin Mary, she is not goddess, she is not above 
God or anything else, anything else that we can come but she is also one among us but she is above us because of her mission so she was chosen as a mother of God so her willingness her humility made her to see that she will be born without original sin that she will be assumed into heaven with her body and soul so the the assumption is not just only given to mother mary and it is biblically known as prophet elijah had assumption too elijah saw elisha saw elijah was being taken up to heaven that's what we read from the from the bible and there is a book written about moses the jewish literature that moses was assumed into heaven that explains what happened as the transfiguration what happens two people come at the mount with jesus when jesus was radiating his cloth and the three apostles were so taken up to see that who comes <coughs> moses and elijah so that explains that they were taken up to heaven with their bodies and souls so it is possible assumption is possible it is is biblically proved also so mother mary was taken up to heaven with her body and soul there are a lot of historical evidence for that that her soul would not see the death the corruption of death and that is how god made her as a immaculate conception and that is how she is specially known as a great model for all those who love and follow jesus the church is also completely says that she is full of grace there is no stain of any sin in her in her soul she is full of grace the church is as all teaching us that we believe that she is our mother the eastern church they always refer her as a theotokos 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 is a greek greek word that means mother of god mother of god is a is a is a very fond way to call her as also they also refer that our mother also but somehow we lost a tradition of calling her mother our mother also how is that she is the mother of jesus the first point the mother is a cause of something am i right if you are a mother you are a cause for the birth of your child you are the cause you are the cause that you are able to deliver your baby and mother may is a cause that jesus is our joy she is a cause of our joy that she was able to deliver jesus so she became the cause of our joy jesus is born to complete our joy and she is a cause of our salvation too and she is a cause of our salvation because jesus brought salvation so that logically applies that she is our mother who caused us to be born in christ so we are the adopted children of mother mary the spiritual children of mother mary so we should have a great way to call her mother mary pray for us and there's a great poem that i was able to read from this book um, by by peter crifford yes please would you would you talk again about her uh, immaculate conception and explain that a little bit more immaculate conception that she was free of the original sin she was born without original sin so how did that happen the immaculate conception was a plan of god revealed through uh, her her way of carrying the mission of god in her life if god would would god send his son to the world and she 
God would have prepared her to be born without virginal sin. Like the vessel has to be clean so you can pour something. Something can be so beautiful so you have to fill something so you should be clean enough to put something more beautiful something. I've had that discussion with my dad mm -hmm. and he's taken great exception to that. And uh, I tried to explain it. I, I believe it. Mm -hmm. I can understand it. Mm -hmm. But he could never accept it. That, and I don't know why because exactly what you say uh -huh. is necessary. It is necessary. She has to be free of sin uh -huh. to bear he who has no sin. Yes. And but that's a real stumbling block. Yeah, it is, it is very hard to um, convince some of our Protestant brothers when they say, no, that cannot be possible. Well, it seems perfectly logical for me. Yeah. If Jesus was born, if Jesus was born without sin, am I right? I'm sure all the Protestants agree to that. Jesus was born without sin. If Jesus was born, then God would have prepared Mother Mary to be born without original sin. So her immaculate conception was was a kind of total, uh, it's a kind of divinely planned before the birth of Jesus as a way to explain that too. St. Anselm explains that as a way to say that this was a divinely revealed plan to say that immaculate conception was a, was a revealed plan even before the birth of Christ. So it was revealed through her birth that she was born without virginal sin. Yes. So. Certain things we cannot assume that, but what has been revealed to us, that's what we are able to uh, see the logical argument behind that. And another way to say that immaculate conception uh, let people to have a great way to aspire for to live a holy life. You know, that's also, that, are, that was also made possible uh, for many people to be a, like Mother Mary, imitation of Blessed Virgin Mary. So many saints, many holy men and women, they also want to be Blessed Virgin Mary. They, they, they prepare themselves, like she was preparing herself for Jesus to be born. So, and that's also a great way to say that we imitate our Lord Jesus Christ, and we also imitate Blessed Virgin Mary to prepare for Jesus to be with us, to be united with us, to be intimate with us. And that's called our own way of imitating Blessed Virgin Mary. We are not born like her without original sin, but we can be without sin just like Mother Mary in our spiritual life too. So we are, we are kind of imitating Blessed Virgin Mary. And I'd like to read uh, how this uh, poetic way of uh, describing who Mother Mary is to Jesus. The title is Jesus and Mary, body of Christ from Mary's body, blood of Christ from Mary's blood, Jesus the bread, Mary the yeast. Mary the kitchen, Jesus the feast. Mary the mother by whom we are fed. Mary the oven, Jesus the bread. Mary the soil, Jesus the vine. Mary the winemaker, Jesus the wine. Mary, Jesus the true, the tree of life. Mary the sword. Mary our God bearer, Jesus our God. Mary the silk warm, Jesus the silk. Mary the nurse, 
Jesus the milk Mary the stem Jesus the flower Mary the stairway Jesus the tower Mary and Jesus our castle and tower Mary the fireplace Jesus the fire Mary God's ink Jesus God's name Mary the burning bush Jesus the flame Mary the paper Jesus the word Mary the nest Jesus the bird Mary the artery Jesus the blood Mary the flood gate Jesus the flood Mary and Jesus our riches untold Mary the gold mine Jesus the gold This is a great way to see the the role of mother mary you know this this poem is really kind of inspiring as a way to see the role of blessed virgin mary and how god interplayed the role of blessed virgin mary in the salvation history so the, the purpose why he brought her the purpose her mission still continues today for her children for her spiritual children to love and to follow Christ so they may have eternity they may have eternal life through Christ so if you ask any i, I will throw two questions if we ask any convert protestants who left catholic church went to a different church if we ask them this question do they now love less mary or more jesus than before or did they understand our teaching on mother mary or misunderstood or misused if we ask them i'm sure they may say no it doesn't change anything or if you ask any new catholic who came from different church different denomination have become new catholics if we ask them do they love jesus more because they love mother mary more now of course they would say that because they understand that she was able to love jesus and they have a great model they have a great example that they can also love jesus are are they able if you ask the new catholic converts do you understand the teaching on mother mary more now than before do you have a clear understanding now i'm sure they are going to say yes if they understand if they know the teaching what the catholic church is teaching So in no way that the misunderstanding can be a hurdle or problem or a hurdle for someone who can who is willing to love Jesus and they can love mother mary as a way to to see the divine plan for their salvation so through mary you are able to follow jesus through mary you are able to love jesus more through mary your salvation comes nearer only through christ salvation can be offered given only by christ but it it becomes easy if you are able to love and able to pray to blessed virgin mary and able to ask the help of many saints and they are the our spiritual helps our companions on our journey to salvation any questions wow you answered my question okay thank you thank you rosemary thank you kathy yes that poem uh huh can you provide us with a reference uh huh I'll go back to you. Okay. 
when I, when I see the reference here. Okay. Thank you. Jesus, the poem, Jesus and Mary. Okay, let's conclude with a small prayer. As we all know the same prayer that I'm going to pray. In the, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thy among women, and blessed is the fruit of them, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now under the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. St. Vincent de Paul, our patron, all holy men and women, the Lord be with you. May God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you all. Thank you, Father. Yes. Sure. Well, Jesus was her first son, which does not necessarily mean that there were more. No. Because my son has one child, so Ethan is his first son, but they don't have any more. Um, there are.